All right, we're back here in Lakeland, South Lakeland Airfield. We're talking about the Merlin today. Chip Irwin with Aeromarine LSA. And you may have already heard about the Merlin. It's a lot different than most experimental aircraft. It does fit in the LSA box, so you can fly it with a light sport aircraft license and with no medical. But it's a, it's a 120 mile an hour pocket rocket aircraft, and it costs one third the price of most LSAs because aircraft go up exponentially with the number of seats. So if you have a two seat airplane that you're rarely flying with, with two people, you're spending $100,000 for a place to put your phone. And for that amount of money, you can rent a two seater whenever you want to take somebody flying. And this airplane is more fun than most LSAs. It's a higher wing loading. It, 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 it's more like a, a motorcycle. It has a pretty good power to rate weight ratio with a 60 horsepower four stroke engine. It just takes off in three or four seconds, climbs a thousand feet a minute, cruise up to 120 miles an hour, uh, true airspeed, and it's big. It doesn't look big, but everybody fits in. Six foot six, 250, 270 pounds, you fit in. It's 27 and a half inch wide cockpit, leg room, and it's got baggage that you can put a, a full size uh, <clears throat> airline roll on in, a computer bag, a case of water, whatever else you want, camping gear, almost anything that fits in it. So is this a kit ready to fly, or what is the, the deal with this well, airframe? experimental amateur built. But there's a huge difference between one and another aircraft because if you get the national kit evaluation team in and control the kit, it's a three-day process, and prove that the kit, the quick build kit, is 51% compliant to the rule, then you're golden. Then you could bring in the kit, and we bring in the kit, it looks like a finished airframe, but it's not. The top skins um, and the, the fuselage skin, the wing is built and assembled but the skins are put on every six rivet with a temporary soft aluminum rivet. So you spend actually the first day that you get your kit taking it apart and you make it back into a kit and you're still compliant. You still have to work on the controls. You can access everything. You can put your wiring in. You can check everything I got and check off each page through the manual, but it goes so fast. Your rudder is finished in 20 minutes. Your wing is finished in a day. So what would be the, the average build time for a new person build one of these? Well, uh, that again, it's a little bit subjective, but the airframe can be built in under a week and sometimes even, even, even just a few days. Really, you can put, it, it comes, you have to uh, bolt the gear on. <clears throat> Actually, we put the gear on for shipping. So check the bolts and then you could put the engine on the first day. So really, the most of the build time is not the airframe. The airframe goes really fast. It's mostly just depending on if you put on an unusual engine or you put on a, the engine we provide with the firewall forward package that's all prepared and bolts right on. And then it's really the hardest thing. The two hardest thing is finishing the panel. If you're doing a complex EFIS, transponder, transceiver, ADSB in and out, iPad, whatever you put it on the panel, and painting. But we even offer painting. Painting in the panel does not count in the build. So our builder assist, we can offer those services. It talks about the, the wing design. This obviously has flaps, but let's talk about the wing for a second. Well, the thing about using a high-end 3D software like Katya and using uh, the modern uh, turret punch presses, we can do not just match hole technology like I used to do with Sport Cruiser with just pilot holes, but we can go to the extreme where the final hole size is punched and they all line up. And you have a battery operated drill with an eighth inch bit and you just put drop your rivets in and almost all of them just fit in once in a while you just chase it and drop your rivets in no deburring uh, no no real drilling um, the airplane just goes together super quick and you have a complex wing that you wouldn't be able to build in a home workshop uh, some other airplanes and there's a good reason for that they have constant cord wings they have all the same ribs and they're easy to build they're designed for the home builder this is designed to be finished in a factory on jigs uh, and have every single rib is a different size. Every rib on the aileron and the flap and the nose rib and the tail rib, they're all different. But they go together like just a, like a glove, just drops right in place because it's already done for you. And it's been inspected and approved by the FAA. You still have to do 51%, but it's 51% of the tasks. The FAA doesn't care 
if you put 4,000 rivets in. They care if you learned how to put rivets in. They, they care about learning experience, about education, and about the quality and, and enjoyment of the build process. And number one, about a safe aircraft. And a safer aircraft is one that is done mostly by professionals and overseen with the builder as kind of a school on how to build aircraft. So you come out of the build program and you built your aircraft legally and you sign an affidavit saying you built it legally and you learned everything about the airplane inside and out. All right, now we've got you sitting in the cockpit here. Talk to us about what it's like to fly this thing and your, what you rotate at, climb at, cruise at, and all the numbers. Yeah, that's the best part. The takeoff is exhilarating. It's like an acceleration with this lightweight and 60 horsepower it sets you back in the seat. You're not just pushing the throttle forward and waiting for the speed to build up. You're pushing the throttle forward and pulling the stick back, getting the nose light right away, and 150 feet or so, you're already flying. And, and you take off with 20 degrees of flaps, but the speed builds so quickly, it'll take more than a few more seconds and you're putting the flaps up because you're over 75 miles an hour. All right, so we got that flap and handle it, <laughs> handy yeah. there. How many degrees of flaps does it well, have? Well, there's, there's, um, there's four increments up, up to 40. I basically use two. I use 20 to, for takeoff. Remember, it's a higher wing loading aircraft, but the flaps are very powerful. They're slotted fuller flaps, so they're very effective. So the 20 degrees makes a big difference in your coefficient of lift. So you put that in to take off, and you can take off in three or four seconds and with that great acceleration of that 60 horsepower, and then it just keeps building. And you have to be careful that you don't exceed the flap speed. Uh, so in only a few more seconds, you're above 75 miles an hour, and you can put the flaps up. And then uh, coming, coming in, in, 40 degrees really steepens your approach. It really slows down the airplane. And then you can just come in and, and, and land, and, and you've got uh, hydraulic brakes that are operated with your hand next to the throttle. It's a very clever mechanism for that. It works perfectly. You can work independent or together. And, and the braking and the stopping is very quick. So this, is, this airplane is great on grass. So what is, what is your approach speeding over the fence type thing? Uh, I approach at at, um, four, at 50, 55 miles an hour, and um, and just keep it at that speed, and then I I just um, let the speed bleed off, which it does pretty well with the flaps at 40 degrees, and just um, land in the around 40, around 40 low 40s indicated. I imagine the stall is pretty um, low. What, what does it stall at? Well, it it stalls it depend. And again, the flaps make a big difference. So it's between 38 and 40 and 48 miles an hour. Okay. And the stall, it's really benign. Uh, I've done a lot of stall videos and it's really kind of hard to make it uh, break. It just kind of mushes a bit, full control, at power and you're flying again. Can you believe how many people are watching right now that aren't subscribed? Wow, it's a big number. See, consider this an invitation. Now let me introduce you to our sponsors that make all this possible. Awesome companies like Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com AirWorks at AirWorksAviation.com And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. So on, on this model, what is the empty weight and, and useful load again? Yeah, the empty weight is uh, 415 pounds, and you've got uh, a little over 300 pounds of useful load, which is uh, uh, me full fuel, 12 gallons, and just about anything I can fit in the baggage. Uh, and there's plenty of room. It's super comfortable. You know, I can stretch my legs out almost fully, full, fully like that. Um, the bubble doors give you a lot of elbow room, a wide cockpit, and you can wear that uh, funny cowboy hat if you want. There's no problem with headsets or longer torso people. Well, it's really comfortable. And I fly for two or three hours at a time and when I'm doing a cross country, for example, from Florida to Oshkosh, and then uh, l land and refuel and take a break and then go back at it. And then uh, it, I've had autopilot in, and I don't recommend it. It, it just flies, it's just so stable. I can just um, let go and read my book and, uh, you know, seriously, <laughs> and just the wing goes down a little bit with turbulence, I just tap the rudder, it comes back, I just look at the GPS, see if I'm on the line. They've got the ADS-B on the, on the iPad in and out, 
you know where traffic is. Uh, you got the transponder, transceiver, and uh, play music through the noise canceling headsets. Yeah, it's really, it's the way to fly. It's super comfortable and, and entertaining and, and you know, you don't need autopilot on an airplane like this. It's just too much fun to fly. So here's your throttle and your brake is moving at the same time, but the brake's not actuated. The brake lever you pull back with the, the finger, the hydraulic brakes, it's super powerful. You can lock them up without, with two fingers and you can, you can put the brakes on and the throttle for your run up. Um, or, or you just put it in idle when you land and put the brakes on to slow down. And it's very sophisticated uh, geometry, but it works perfectly. All right, so, so what is powering this, or what are the options to power this airframe? Well, we had two options. We still have two options. The Rotax 582 works great because it's lightweight and it's uh, super par powerful, and it really spins up and accelerates the airplane. I really like that. I climbed to 12,000 feet in, in uh, 20 minutes with that. Uh, so, but uh, two-stroke isn't for everybody. And right. I, I started in the 80s with ultralights and I had my share of engine outs. And two-strokes, uh, I don't like them so much. And, but they're really, they, they can be fine. They're good maintenance and they're perfect. Uh, but most people prefer four-strokes and they're a lot more fuel uh, economical. So you do, you've got an option yeah. for that then. Well, we had the HKS and that's what most people were buying. But a year and a half ago, they uh, announced they were stopping production. I bought the last uh, couple of them off the production line. We're still installing those. We have, but so if you could find one, we could offer the firewall forward package. Uh, and that's a great engine, but we needed something new. And we had a year and a half to do it. Now we found one. So we get an, an engine out of the UTVs. Those are the uh, kind of the bigger ATV. Side by side. The, the, type. the side yeah. by side, the four, four wheeled, um, utility vehicles that uh, they drive around the logging trails on in swamps and just beat the crap out of them. You know, I hate to be um, kind of a cliche, but the redneck tested, I call it. Because <laughs> I've never seen one on the back of a trailer or in a pickup truck that wasn't covered with mud. Right. And they, they really, all the, it's such a great engine because it's, it's the most modern engine available. It's got uh, fuel injection. So we have a, a really, we've developed our aviation style uh, twin redundant uh, high pressure fuel pumps with return and it's electronic ignition because that's what everything is now and, it, and all you really do is change oil until the engine wears out then you don't do a TBO you do a TBR time before replacement when the engine wears out which is over a thousand hours you just put a new one in for less than the cost of a rebuild you get a brand new engine so those engines are made by the tens of thousands and they're all over the world and you get service for the engine we chose. Almost every state in the country and every country has distribution of that engine because they, they sell the, the snowmobiles or jet skis or uh, UTVs and ATVs that it's installed in. Right. So it's really well distributed and well supported. And we just adapt it for our aviation. We don't use that big heavy uh, transmission. You know, we don't have that on there at all. We, we have our own reduction drive, which we make in India. And we have our own custom-made carbon props, which we make in Slovakia. And we put all this together, and we're just finishing the the cowl and the final installation and all the bits and pieces a builder will need, the, the radiators, the fuel pump system, that part's done. So, so this is four-stroke, water-cooled, V-twin, and what's the horsepower yeah, range on those? Yeah, 61 horsepower. We just round it down to 60. All right, so tell us the price point on this uh, and, and whatever different levels you have for the kit. This is a... This is kind of surprising how inexpensive this is. You can get the airframe that's mostly finished, even though it's 51% compliant, for under $20,000. And then you add an engine uh, that's under 10, and that includes the firewall forward package. I mean, the HKS was 12,000. The Rotax 582 is over six. And that's plus the firewall forward package, the radiators, the cowls, propellers, all the nuts and bolts and cooling and exhaust system. Ours is under 10,000 and that includes the engine and everything, everything. So by the, you could have this airplane finished with a little bit of work for uh, and, and a basic EFIS, you know, a nice glass panel and then you can use your, your phone for, for for flight or a Garmin a pilot app and you're good to go for maybe $35,000 at the end of the day when you're finished in a few weeks. Um, is some there of the, any, anything? If you wanna, in well, I could say 
the deluxe ones with ADS-B in and out and moving maps and bigger screens, they, it's really hard to, to break $45,000. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Remember to rivet down that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit all the bell notifications so you don't miss a single episode. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.